we come to a yet higher level discussion on the actual process of doing data science or analyzing big data in clouds to solve X informatics problems. And that's the so-called data science process. Now to perform the data science process, we need data scientists. And this is uh, Davenport, an evangelicist in this area from Harvard Business School, his view of a data scientist. He, uh, at the top, he makes uh, an important but possibly slightly controversial statement about what a data scientist is. He says that the person is 50% sort of statistician and modeling and things, and 50% computer science issues such as data management, and he can do lots of programming. So there are two comments on that, which I have on the next slide. Uh, the first comment is that there, if you remember the McKinsey report on data science, it said there were 1.5 million decision makers and managers and 190,000 nerds. So I would say Davenport's uh, uh, characterization is really for the nerds, not for the journalists, the larger 1.5 million. And the 1.5 million is roughly the target of this particular class. Uh, the second point to make about this issue is, if we, there's a general comment on interdisciplinary work. Originally, one used to think with interdisciplinary work, we will generate these individuals, which if we want the computer science statistics and say application expertise on medical informatics, we chop up their brain and train a third of it in each of those areas. There is an alternative, which is to actually build a team of three people, one, each, one in each of those areas and have the people, any one individual is expert in one area, but able to talk to people in the other areas. So that's uh, possibly a more effective uh, approach, because then you have real experts in every area. Uh, the other comments here are saying that obviously this happens in science, from experimental physics, that's the Large Hadron Collider, biologists, that's gene sequencing, and all the other aspects of biology which are advancing so fast. We need statisticians who actually take their, pro, their expertise and apply to real areas. Biostatistics is a well-known field. And of course, we need the other areas of science as well. The last two comments about impatience. Um, that says this is a disruptive technology, it's changing very fast, and it's better to do something quickly than to do it maybe a little more carefully and take a long time over it. So time to completion is pretty important. The other comment about groundbreaking says this is disruptive technology. It is going to break ground, break break uh, new areas open. So now we get to a slide from Jeff Hummerbach himself about the whole process, and he says that uh, he has his slide and several other people's slides on what the process should look like, and his slide is uh, pretty reasonable. Uh, he has seven uh, steps in the data science process. First is to identify the problem. That's obviously critical. You need to you need to know what you're doing. Placing fear and diapers on shelves, or trying to understand whether there's a Higgs boson. Once you decide what the problem is, you need to find where the data is going to come from, and make certain that data um, is collectible. You need to build the accelerator. That takes some 20 years. Or else you just need to run a web crawler, which can be done overnight or something. Then you get all the data from whatever source you have, and you need to prepare it. So this preparation is roughly the conversion of data to information, or raw data to data to information. And that involves integrating data from different parts. I mean, this data is not necessarily collected in the same, same location. It can be in several different locations. But naturally, data is distributed because it comes from sensors, and those sensors are distributed. And uh, then we need to transform it and clean it up. He uses the word transform and filter. I would consider those essentially the same. A transformation is a filter and vice versa. I do not know what impute means. Um, aggregation is this issue of data fusion. We often need to take data from different sources. So integrate, as I interpreted, is taking Data of a given type from multiple sources. Aggregate is taking data of different types. Both of those are important. Then we need to convert this data from information to knowledge. That requires building a model. That model is unlikely to be right first time, so we need to iterate it and evaluate it. And then finally, we need to communicate the results. We need to tell the store where to place their products. 
we need to write the paper which is reviewed critically about any discoveries we've made. Uh, here's another process that uh, he has down, which is a simpler one of similar nature. Obtain the data, scrub it up, that's data to information, explore. So this is not really a complete concept, it just says we need to explore, the, look at the data, run different filters on it, and see what's, what's going on. We will need a model, in my opinion, in the exploration. I don't think explore and model are really separate steps. And then we need to interpret the results and as in the previous case, we need to discover, uh, tell people what the interpretation is. So these are all very reasonable steps, and they all must be put together. Here's uh, the process as seen by a statistician, Colin Mallers. And um, it's a slightly different take on the same steps. He uh, agrees we need to find the data and identify what data is needed. We need to formulate the problem in terms of which filters are needed. That's the statistical specification of the problem. We need to select which method, which are the various different um, uh, methods which could be used, we should choose. We need to um, actually run the method, analyze its success, iterate it, and so on. That's step four. And finally, the results need to be interpreted as in the previous uh, discussion, previous version of the process. Here's Ben Fry, a visualization expert, and his, his um, according to Hammond Barker, his uh, pipeline is acquire the data, parse it, that's data to information, filter it, that's information to, um, to knowledge. In that filtering, we're sort of mining it, so again, I would put um, filter and mining as, uh, as different mining, as different aspects of the basic process of going from information to knowledge. Represent, not quite certain what that means, but uh, maybe it means take the data and present it in forms that can be visualized. We need to, everything we do needs to be refined, and we surely need to interact with ourselves and, um, uh, I mean, interact uh, by ourselves with the data and also with other people uh, for the final step. That's the communication step. Here's Peter Huber, another statics person from uh, Berkeley. Inspect the data, we need to curate the data, that's error checking. Data is always full of errors, and uh, it is possibly, you need to always check that uh, uh, as much as possible, that there are no errors that will cause you to get the wrong answer. You need to have very fault tolerant algorithms. After checking for errors, you either discard the data or correct it. Um, you need to compare what you're doing with your with your what you did in the past, where maybe on smaller data sets. We need to do the model, and the model may have parameters, which means you have to fit the model. <coughs> we possibly need to do simulations. Uh, an example of that would be uh, the data process. Say, um, if we were a military commander. Um, and we got data on the enemy positions and uh, locations and uh, their troop strengths and uh, things like that. And we would take that data and put it into a simulation, maybe of the weather, and decide where, when would be an appropriate time for us to take various steps with, uh, with uh, say, aircraft or, or ground troops to um, to get the most greatest possible impact. So simulations can involve. Uh, uh, very, very um, sort of solid things like the simulation of the weather, or they could actually be the simulation of a particular battle, or in the case of, say, earthquake, uh, um, somebody uh, responding to an earthquake. The simulations could involve deciding where, simulating possible aftershocks, and uh, making certain that all our steps were consistent with the possible impact of serious aftershocks. Um, simulation is a little like what if analyses, namely some of the simulations we're going to do will be, say this commander, he's going to do a what if analysis. Suppose I sent the aircraft out at this time and the troops out in that direction at another time, what would happen? We obviously need to interpret all the things we've done and present our conclusions. Here's Jim Bay Gray of Microsoft. He's an absolute wonderful pioneer in the database area, who did a lot of important work on e-science, especially in the data area. He points out that uh, there's just three steps. Get the data, 
worry about the data and create it. I've already discussed the important creation to get quality data. And then he just um, says we need to communicate whatever results. And he doesn't stress the, the analysis steps going from the creation to which is going to take us from creation will get us to information. But after information, we need to get through to knowledge. So he's, uh, that step is implied in his, uh, in his uh, simple, in his uh, elegant view. Um, Ted Johnson, no, I'm not, I did not find out uh, where he, what, what his context was. His two steps were assemble an accurate and relevant data set. We've seen that before, get the data of, which is relevant, and then we need to find an algorithm. And uh, clearly, there are many different algorithms and several different approaches and different data, even in the same field, might require different algorithms.